Ja, yes. Yeah. So good morning everyone. Shall we start the session then? Right. So shall we start? So meanwhile, uh, any of you are from uh, mechanical engineering background? Okay, so no issue. So fine, yeah. So before starting the session, I would like to promise you one thing. This session is going to be an eye opener for you, especially uh, while performing 3D printing. What about blunders we do while choosing especially an appropriate material? Okay, so that's why please be concentrated. I'm going to tell you very, very important things which you don't know, right? So, a very good morning, everyone. So, welcome to our day three. So, we are going to have the complete session on how to choose a material for performing fused deposition modeling. So, I don't know whether you're aware of it. FDO means Fused deposition modeling. The 3D printers on which you worked yesterday and day before yesterday, they works on the technique of fused deposition modeling. So let us try to understand what is the principle of working. Then you will uh, get to know more about uh, their materials, their performance, how to choose an appropriate material, all this. Definitely you are going to enhance your knowledge to choose a better material, right? So here, just quickly, I will go through uh, some of the contents like, so a 3D printing or additive manufacturing, right? So here we are going to build any of our complex products by printing layer by layer, right? So first we are going to take the CAD geometry, that from the CAD geometry we are going to perform the slicing. Typically we use some uh, dedicated softwares to perform the slicing operation, right? Then your uh, fused deposition modeling machine or 3D printer is going to perform a layer by layer printing operation, right? So that's how actually a 3D printer is going to be work. Now you might have raised the question, whatever the products you are producing or you are printing using 3D printing, can't we produce using any other existing uh, manufacturing process? Strictly speaking, that level of complexity we can't achieve using any of the conventional manufacturing process. So the main advantage of this 3D printing or additive manufacturing is the only advantage what you are going to get uh, an enhanced complexity you are going to achieve, right? So now another important thing, there are many 3D printing techniques, right? It depends on the form in which you are taking the raw material. You might be taking the raw material in liquid form and raw material in the solid form. Yesterday uh, on 3D printers on which you work, you have taken the raw material in the solid form, right? And some of the techniques you are going to take even in powder form also or thin sheets also, right? So these three are the raw material forms in which we are going to take, right? For 3D printing. So the technique, the one of the uh, famous technique for liquid uh, based raw material is going to be stereolithography, right? I don't want to explain you in depth about all the techniques. At least I'm going to explain you about the fusion deposition modeling so that you will understand in a better way. The next raw material one, the most economical one and uh, most popular one is fusion deposition modeling. We will discuss why fusion deposition modeling is such famous. The next immediately we are going to have raw material in the powder form, right? Typically, we are going to use it for metals. So for metal 3D printers, selective laser sintering, and there are other uh, 3D printing techniques like direct metal laser sintering, etc. Right? But selective laser sintering is going to be the uh, worldwide most famous one and people they are using rigorously. Right? So here, 
as I have shown you three types of raw materials liquid based, solid based and powder based so these are all the missions how they are going to look like right uh, please don't think that uh, all FDM based 3D printers they are supposed to look like this right there are n number of varieties in fuse deposition modeling also so here the first one it is going to work on stereolithography technology where your raw material is in liquid form right and here you are seeing here the one on which you are currently working which is the fuse deposition modeling technique but you don't know how this uh, technique is going to work if you know how fuse deposition modeling is going to work you will understand how to choose a material right and the next typically this is the mission which we use for metal base or powder based 3d printers okay i will tell you one more thing wherever you go you see only fdm missions it's rare to see like stereolithography based or powder based do you know the reason simple whichever is economical they are going to be used right in more so that's why the stereolithography based uh, printers they are going to cost around if a good quality printer if you want to purchase it they will cost around 1 lakh to 6 lakh they are in the wide range of 1 lakh to 6 lakh whereas the FDM one you know the Enders missions which you are using right now they are coming at a cost of 15,000 ok and you know metal based 3D printers where you are going to take initially the raw material in the powder form they cost around 50 lakh to 1 crore ok so these among all the different types of powder uh, powder form or liquid form or solid form in whatever the form we are taking the 3d printers or the raw material so among all the ones the fuse deposition modeling where the solid based 3d printers they are most economical these as i said they are coming at a range of 1 lakh to 6 lakh these are just commercially available just for 15,000 nowadays even less than that also we are getting and then metal based one or uh, really the costly ones uh, we need to get about uh, we need to spend about 50 lakh to 1 crore for this right so now you might have understand among all different types of raw material forms the one which we are taking it is the most economical one right so these two are basically for polymers and this is for metals right so metal based ready to manufacturing is more costly not only the initial establishment cost of the mission or etc maintenance cost operational cost everything is uh, very costly so here material cost much cheaper you are getting 1 kg of bundle of PLA for a uh, cost of 800 rupees to 1000 rupees right so we will go ahead so here I would like to explain you how this fuse deposition modeling currently all the 3d printers which you are using right now they are working on fuse deposition modeling technique right so now here of course in some of the techniques you require a support material and for other materials you need not require any support material but unfortunately one of the drawbacks of FDM technique is you require a support material wherever necessary right so typically uh, it is uh, we are going to have two nozzles within the nozzle there are going to be two slots actually so one slot is for actual material and the slot is for uh, your support material right so typically the material whatever you are using do you know what type of material you are using right now you say PLA, ABS etc all they are polymers right we used to say plastics plastic also a part of polymer only that I am going to explain you so now what is going to happen this polymer material whenever we are injecting through a nozzle which is a heated nozzle right so through the nozzle uh, typically above the melting temperature of the material we are going to heat it then the entire plastic material or polymer material it is going to be melted and it is going to be moved along the path in which your 3d printing head is moving that print uh, head is going to move as per the pre-given program which you are going to define right so now here from one side you are going to basically give the build material from another side you are going to give the support material so now one thing one important point I would like to tell you 
So here the material is melted and getting deposited on a platform, right? It is melting means we are heating above the melting temperature, right? So which means the first parameter whenever you are purchasing a material, right? You should know on which printer you are going to work. What is the nozzle temperature, maximum nozzle temperature? It should be higher than melting temperature of the material. If the nozzle temperature for an example maximum nozzle temperature is 200 degrees Celsius right and if the material which you have purchased its melting temperature is 250 degrees Celsius then it is useless whatever you have purchased you can't perform printing on that mission right next one more thing you are melting the material and you are depositing on a particular platform or bed right and one thing the material is just melted and it is getting deposited on the platform it is just melted and getting deposited on the platform so material is near to its melting temperature just, just, it, just it got melted and getting deposited on the platform if the platform is at room temperature the material is at near to its uh, melting temperature addition may be inappropriate so for that reason the bed temperature you can't keep always at room temperature right it may vary from material to material right so some materials they require 52 degrees celsius some materials they require 90 to 100 degrees celsius right so two important things what i would like to tell you here your nozzle is completely melting the material and depositing so you need to ensure what is the nozzle temperature maximum temperature on which you are working and what is the melting temperature of your material right so always your nozzle temperature should be higher than the melting temperature of the material then only printing is possible right the next so the second important point what i would like to explain you here your bed temperature need not to be at room temperature the reason is material is at relatively higher temperature if the bed is at room temperature the addition is going to be inappropriate okay so that's why always the bed temperature need to be maintained relatively at higher temperatures right so, as I was explaining about three different types of techniques, uh, stereolithography, selective laser sintering, and then uh, FDM. So, better we concentrate more on FDM because you are going to work on fuser deposition modeling only. So, here this picture is going to give you many details, such as this advantages. As I was explaining you, this is the most economical process. Raw material also economical. Processing and printing also relatively easy. Printer you will be able to get at a cost of minimum 15,000. At that cost you are able to get the uh, machine, right? So operation also going to be very easy. Anyone uh, can get trained within uh, two days to work on FDM mission. So all these advantages we are having. But when it comes to the disadvantages, already I have explained you one disadvantage that it requires a support material additionally, right? So later on a post processing is required, once you print the material with support, later on you have to dissolve the support in a particular chemical or you have to remove the support material, right? And then further a post processing is required. The next here, there are certain process parameters, layer thickness, the orientation of the layer, nozzle temperature, infill pattern, air gap, print speed, right? All these, the process parameters which you can vary while performing the FDM operation. So, if you are not in a position to choose an appropriate parameters, right, even though the material is suitable for this printing, okay, you may not finally end up with the required product, okay. So, when it comes to the applications, so all these applications starting from biomedical to nowadays, even houses also getting 3D printed using fusion deposition modeling. Then finally, these all are the filaments. Right, I will explain you in detail about each and every type of material starting from PLA, ABS, SDPE, high density poly, polyethylene. Right, the next a uh, peak, all time, some advanced materials are there. So, I am going to explain you few important things. Please listen to me. Right, this slide is very important because you may not be knowing all this, some of the fundamentals. These are required to choose a appropriate material. Right. So polymers typically they are two types of polymers, thermoplastic polymers and thermoset polymers, right? 
So here, as you are not from mechanical engineering background, I don't want to go in depth about the physics, right, and how the material behavior, etc., are going to be there, right. But here, I would like to tell you one thing: the the thermoset polymers, right, they can't be recycled, they can't be melted and reshaped. Okay. So right now, we are using thermoplastic polymers, which can be melted and we can bring them into the required form. right so that's why a thermoplastic polymer is a category of polymer materials so that's why we call as plastic by default we call everything as plastic actually its name is thermoplastic polymer so to pronounce it completely we can't pronounce it so later on they shortened the term and directly they started calling it as plastic the actual term is thermoplastic polymer so all these are polymers only whatever the material with which it is melted i think it is polypropylene or abs it or it also a thermoplastic polymer okay so now i will tell you one thing thermosets can be 3d printed only thermoplastics can be 3d printed so whatever the materials you are using pla abs right polypropylene polyethylene everything all are thermoplastic polymers only right now for thermoplastic polymers we have to understand one very very important aspect here here if you observe this graph on y axis we are having the stiffness of the material on x axis we are having the temperature so what is happening here the stiffness of the material at room temperature it is relatively high when i keep on increasing the temperature at a particular stage there is a steep drop in the stiffness of the material so what does it indicates when we go for higher temperatures the material is going to become a thermal softening it will be softening okay what does it mean that this particular temperature is called as glass transition temperature okay so far you are using materials like pla abs abs or whatever but any one of you do you know what is the glass transition temperature of pla if you know the glass transition temperature of pla above the temperature it is almost can't be used the reason is below the glass transition temperature the material is having stiffness above the glass transition temperature the material is going to lost its stiffness it will become rubbery all these thermoplastic polymers are having this characteristic right they exhibit like rigid and strong below the glass transition temperature and above the glass transition temperature they will be rubbery in nature okay so you might be printing pla right yesterday you might you might have printed with pla material the pla material is having glass transition temperature 60 degrees what does it mean that whatever you have printed if you heat it above 60 degrees uh, celsius it will become rubbery and it will become very soft so you can't use that material anymore so what it is going to indicate that beyond 60 degrees there is no use of that material whatever you are using so for a material you should know what is the glass transition temperature not only the melting temperature you should know even the glass transition temperature also very very important you should know it okay so here so please remember the term glass transition temperature we are going to get it many places in upcoming slides okay so now these are the differences between thermoplastic materials and thermoset materials as i was telling you whatever we are using right now all are thermoplastic materials okay so they can be remodeling melted and shaped in the required format so here you see this particular chair is a thermoplastic material it has been fabricated using injection molding it can be achieved in this shape because it is a thermoplastic material if it is a thermoset material it can't get this shape right or later on after a while once its lifetime is ended i can cut into small pellets i can reuse this thermoplastic material it is reusable right so i can recycle all these thermoplastic polymers so that's why thermoplastic polymers are having more applications when compared with thermoset polymers right so here from the beginning onwards from the beginning everything we are studying only about 3d printing right 
did you ever think about how this chair has been manufactured using this injection molding okay here we are going to have a screw we are going to have a hopper we are going to give thermoplastic pellets here if you see uh, the screw on the top and bottom or on the circumference we are having, we are having a heating element so this heating element and further the screw is going to obtain a proper mixture and heating element will bring into a melting temperature so here we are having the mold we are injecting the plastic material inside the mold then immediately upon cooling we are going to get the required product right so that's how typically thermoplastics are going to be processed and manufactured but now what are the disadvantages of this process if i want to print a complex shape it is not possible right if i ch change the uh, chair dimensions initially i started with one chair dimensions later on when i change the dimensions the entire mold need to be redesigned and the new mold need to be manufactured that itself is expensive right so to overcome from all these uh, limitations which we have in injection molding so we are going for a 3d printing so when i see uh, if you if i ask you to manufacture such type of complex product other than 3d printing it is not possible with any of the conventional manufacturing techniques only 3d printing is having such capability right so these are all the top 10 applications starting from uh, in the initial stage in the initial stages of 3d printing or additive manufacturing they use this technique only for prototypes manufacturing suppose when i come up with a new product right so directly i i can't go to market i can't build 1000 or 10000 numbers of those elements first i have to build a prototype one in number it can be tested if it is satisfying my requirements right then i can go for mass production so first a prototype need to be fabricated right so for that reason this 3d printing initially is having the name as rapid prototyping also right so starting from prototyping to nowadays all the dental aviation aerospace medical everywhere we are using this 3d printing applications okay so here we will enter into our main part so please concentrate here what are fuse deposition modeling materials if you see here these are the standard plastics we are using this standard plastics pla and abs i will explain you what are their limitations then you will get surprise then later on we are having engineering plastics like pet polyethylene tetraphthalate polypropylene tpu thermoplastic uh, urethane right etc we are having engineering plastics then advanced plastics like peak and altem right so we are having these materials these many materials like peak and altem okay so where we what materials you know till now till now you know we might be knowing only pl and abs you don't know any of the other materials right see if everything can get done by pl and abs there is no need of other materials but unfortunately these two abs and pl they are having limited applications only so i'm going to tell you here polylactic acid is a polymer material pla right which is the most frequently used in fdm but it is having least number of applications the reason is here these are the advantages typically whenever beginners they want to learn about fdm they are going to start with pla the only the reason is a better printability it is going to exhibit because of its nature right so that's why it is suggested to start with pla it doesn't mean that you print all the products with pla here we will see here low extrusion temperatures means at low temperatures itself it can be printed here so the melting temperature of pla is 170 to 180 degrees we need to maintain the bed temperature as 50 degrees so printing temperature is around 210 degrees so which means you see printing temperature means or nozzle temperature nozzle temperature need to be always higher than the melting temperature okay so whenever you get to know about specifications of any 3d printer fdm based 3d printer what you supposed to get to know first is what is the maximum nozzle temperature it can go what is the maximum bed temperature it can go that will decide what are the materials you can print okay so 
here. Now, among uh, all the thermoplastic materials, PLA having one specialty that it is a biodegradable material. Okay. Nowadays, we are having lot of concern with regards to plastic and recycling, right? So, among all the materials, PLA is the only material which is which can exhibit biocompatibility or it is a biodegradable material. So, these are all the advantages. When it comes to the limitations, I said one temperature earlier, glass transition temperature. Above that, it will become rubbery stage. So, TZ of the material is as high as possible till the temperature I can use the material. Suppose for an example, for polylactic acid, TZ is around 60 degrees. So, which means I can use the PLA in the environment where the temperature is less than 60 degrees. Suppose for a particular application, if someone asks you to suggest a material or to uh, uh, design your product, right, where the chamber temperature is 100 degrees. So, if you blindly uh, print the entire material with PLA and if you directly print it and if you go for the particular application, because you don't know what is a glass transition temperature, right, glass transition temperature is 60. So, your working environment temperature is 100. It will be, finally, will not solve the purpose. It will be waste of your time and efforts. Okay. So, there is a limit, limitation factor for all the thermoplastic polymer materials that is glass transition temperature. Then next, that's why once the temperatures, environmental temperatures are nearing to the glass transition temperature, the material becoming degrading. It will degrade and it, it will lose its thermal stability, its dimensional accuracy, everything it is going to miss. Okay. Its mechanical strength also not so high, it is maximum around 37 MPa. Right? So there are certain many limitations with PLA, right? Mechanically not so strong, right? At the same time, its TZ is around 60 degrees. Immediately it will go into rubbery stage. I can't use it for all the applications, especially high temperature applications. Then next, it is almost it is recommended to use uh, uh, below 60 degrees. It's not above below 60 degrees. Okay. Now one more thing to increase the thermal stability. What they are going to do here nowadays, if you open and search in the market, not PLA, they will mention PLA plus PLA Pro. Really, you don't know what is the meaning of PLA plus and PLA Pro. They are going to add some reinforcements. Okay, those reinforcements will increase the mechanical strength and thermal stability and printable capability also. So that's why you may feel easy to print those materials. So remember, don't think that the material which is easy, easy to print that will solve all uh, that will serve for, uh, the entire purpose. Wherever you feel printing difficulty, you don't think uh, you don't feel that it is it will not solve your purpose at all. You don't know. Uh, what parameters you are setting, whether the requirements are fulfilled by the uh, 3D printer on which you are working or not. Okay, so this is about the polylactic acid PLA. So a PLA plus or PLA pro or etc. means they are adding some reinforcements to increase the thermal stability and mechanical strength and similarly to achieve a better printability. So if you are a starter, you are requested to start using this PLA Plus or PLA Pro. The reason is, at the initial level, you need to gain the confidence of printing. Right? If you take a difficult material uh, where exactly you don't know what are the printing parameters, right? If you get demotivated, so that's why it is suggested to use PLA or uh, Plus or PLA Pro at the very initial stage. So that once you gain the confidence, you use other materials. Along with PLA, everyone you everyone will say, are there what material you are using for 3D printing? They say ABS, right? If I ask what is the full form of ABS, 99% they will not answer. Okay, so ABS means acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. ABS, it is the full form of the polymer. Now, ABS is having much much better advantages than PLA. Its mechanical strength is high. Thermal stability is high, glass transition temperature is high. So at higher temperatures we can work with ABS, right? Can be prepared in different grades. There are multiple number of grades are available for ABS. But what is the limitation for ABS? 
challenging, it's really a challenging task for printing ABS. The reason is an environmental chamber is required to print ABS. Okay, so here the melting temperature of ABS is around 200 to 210, the bed temperature is around 90 degrees, so printing temperature it is suggested around 220 to 240. Only ABS is required a higher temperature ambience, you can't print in the room temperature. Okay, a, surprise, a separated uh, heating chamber is required. So you need to maintain the environmental temperature or the chamber temperature higher 10 to 20 degrees higher than the room temperature. So then only ABS printing is going to be possible. Right? So other than ABS, we are having many other materials which are much much better than PLA and ABS. They are polycarbonate, polypropylene, right, PEDSI, polyethylene, tetraphthalate glycol is the PEDSI material, right, and thermoplastic polyurethane. All these are the materials which we can uh, use. Here you can see polycarbonate, it is strong, tough, tougher material. It can be easily worked and molded. So, first you should know for what application you are using the material, right, then only you can choose a better material. If really you require toughness, toughness, right, whenever like uh, an impact loads are acting on the material right this can exhibit a uh, this this can exhibit a much a much a higher toughness so in such a case polycarbonate is recommended and polypropylene good chemical resistance if someone asks you design a uh, design a product right which is going to be immersed in a chemical so then one material you should be in a position to suggest which is chemical resistant that material is polypropylene right then the next important material it is PEDZ. PEDZ is having many many better applications. So it is used for design, prototyping, right? So PEDZ is like uh, it is suitable for uh, food containers or uh, etc. Okay, so for those applications we are going to use PEDZ and similarly thermoplastic polyurethane it is going to exhibit excellent mechanical properties. So when the product is actually undergoing mechanical loads then it is almost it is almost suggested to use TPU material. Now remember, all these materials are commercially available. You need not to think much. You need not to fabricate by yourself. Okay. So another important material, right? Here it is going to be peak. Okay. Poly either either ketone. P E K. Poly either either ketone. Right, I will tell you the importance of this material. It is outstanding resistant to harsh chemicals, excellent in mechanical properties, high dimensional stability, proven track record for best performing in any of the environment, P can work. Chemical resistant, environmental resistance, excellent mechanical properties, and then it is having finally applications in aerospace, gas, and food industry. In all the applications, we are having peak material. Okay, so for whatever the application, if someone asks you, you suggest one material, just blindly close, you can close your eyes and you can suggest peak material. But if it is having these many properties, the peak material is having these many advantages, then definitely cost of the peak also must be high. I am going to show you in the upcoming slides what could be the cost of these materials. Okay. So its melting temperature is about 340, bed temperature you need to maintain around 120 degrees Celsius and printing temperature you need to maintain around 370 to 450 degrees Celsius. Okay, and it's required an environmental chamber. So what does it mean? You can't print peak on our regular 3D printers. An environmental chamber is required for peak. The next Apart from peak, we are having one more advanced material. Whatever I am telling you, peak and altem, they are advanced materials, right? This is also extremely strong, high dielectric strength, right? It is having resistance to hot, uh, hot water, hot air, stream, everything, right? But its melting temperature is little below the melting temperature of peak. Peak and altem, they belongs to the same group of materials. Okay, now. I have a question for you, those who are listening. So suppose when I uh, want to manufacture a product, 
just it, it will be worked in a chemical the temperature will be above 100 degrees celsius could you please suggest one material pak you can suggest peak right so but still why people they are not using peak why they are still uh, experimenting on pla abs etc right this is here on the left hand side you are having the 3d printable filaments right so oh, here you can see cost per kg in indian rupees pla is a cheaper 750 to 1250 abs is around 1000 to 1250 tpu 1500 polycarbonate around 1300 to 1500 All time, how much it is? Fifty-seven thousand. Yeah. You can understand how costly it is. Then peak, it is about sixty thousand, right? Actually, I will tell you one thing. There are certain uh, commercial reasons also why this peak and uh, all time uh, rate cost they are much high. The reason is that in India, no one uses these materials. Even if myself, if I want to do research on peak and all time. I don't want to touch those materials because for one kg I have to spend sixty thousand, right? So India, no one purchases altum and peak. So in abroad, many people they are going to use. So basically, in India, there are no manufacturers. There are only third-party sellers who are going to import from abroad and they are going to resell here in India. So that's why the cost is almost fifty percent higher than the actual cost. So that also a reason why altum and peak. so if you purchase directly pellets of these materials and if you use them then definitely uh, you are going to produce at much lower rate okay so now you got an idea which materials you have to choose and what you what are their cost now when i go for pl and abs they are much economical but mechanically chemically thermally they are having lot of drawbacks when i go for altum and peak they could able to give all the requirements but their cost is high but what is the solution for me right so here i am going to give the solution these are carbon fiber reinforce reinforcements fiber reinforcements typically their length is going to be 100 micrometers this is the image which has been captured on the scm mission scanning electron microscopy the length is around 100 to 200 micrometers okay the length itself is 100 to 200 micrometers so such actually you can't see you, if you just touch them you feel like a powder so such type of materials can be reinforced like they are going to look like this after reinforcement and if you see a carbon fiber reinforced right pegzi material is this one you can clearly identify the color once you add the carbon fibers then the color changes to black color completely because carbon is basically extracted from the metal okay so now if you use them then they are going to sacrifice you are going to get better properties than pla and abs and definitely you are going to get at a much lower price than peak or etc now what could be the cost of these filaments so rather than blindly using pla and abs or etc better you may go for carbon fiber reinforced right pegzi plus carbon fiber reinforcements etc so here if you see nylon base weight 20% weight percentage carbon fiber is there it is available at a price of 4900 rupees right whereas altem and uh, uh, peak they are available at 60000 then pla plus carbon fiber 2699 pegzi plus carbon fiber it is about 3299 so much higher than pla and abs but when compared with altem and uh, peak etc so you are going to get at a relatively lower price but if you print your products with these materials you are going to get an extraordinary quality and properties i will tell you so don't blindly print everything with pla okay so you might have understand now what are the mistakes you are doing while choosing the appropriate material okay so now how to choose a material right so just blindly uh, you go to some uh, commercial online website you just type pla or abs or etc first don't search about the material first you know about 
what is the 3d printer available what is the maximum nozzle temperature maximum bed temperature that will decide the materials which are suitable for that printer right otherwise directly blindly you go and purchase peak and all time you can't print them even carbon fiber re reinforced filaments also you can't print them okay so now the first like for what application you want to use for a chemical application or biomedical application if you want to choose a, for a biomedical application pla is the best option but pla alone can't fulfill your requirements pla plus carbon fiber reinforcements right the next then suppose if you, if it is undergoing impact loadings etc polycarbonate pegzi etc i gave you if it is being used for some food containers or etc pegzi i have shown you earlier right so temperatures above which it is being used right so you should choose the material which is having glass transient temperature above the temperature at which you are going to use the final product otherwise if you are using above the glass transient temperature of the material it will become rubbery and soft it will not solve the purpose the next any chemical interactions are there what mechanical properties are required sometimes pure mechanical action mechanical loads might might be acting on the product for an example if you 3d print a chair you are sitting on the chair you are applying a pure mechanical load right suppose for an example if your weight is 100 kg it could able to sustain only 50 kg then once you sit for two times it will break okay so what mechanical properties you are required what is the melting temperature before all of these things you should know right what are the 3d printer uh, configuration parameters what is the melting temperature of the 3d printer which you are having right so then whether whatever the printing temperatures required for that material they are suitable they are possible on the 3d printer which you have all these issue need to ensure right whether any environmental chamber is required for abs p caltem etc environmental chamber is required you should know all these things then finally what is the glass transient temperature of the material if you observe carefully for all different commercial materials what are the glass transient temperatures and then similarly melting temperatures were given here you can see some of the materials polypropylene minus 32 to minus 20 means what does it mean if you purchase a polypropylene by default it is at room temperature its glass transient temperature is about minus 32 to minus 20 degrees which means at room temperature itself it is in rubbery stage so you can't use it much okay so we need to apply some of our common sense right suppose if your working environment is 80 degrees so you need to choose the material which is having a glass transient temperature above 80 degrees so here polystyrene is possible here then pmma is possible then uh, pa66 is possible so that's how you need to choose your material so you should have the clarity on which 3d printer you are working for what application you are using the material then only you could able to select a simple material okay so here i hope i gave all sufficient knowledge for you now actually who have concentrated on my lecture from the beginning onwards right so i think they think much before they use pla and abs right see at the initial stage if you are a learner better go ahead and print it okay once you get confidence later on you are going to apply this knowledge for a particular product for a product development etc right so that product is having particular application that could be a medical application or a biomedical application or a mechanical application or a chemical application right so you should know which polymer is chemical resistant which polymer is Uh, environmental resistance which can work above 90 degrees or 100 degrees that material you should suppose to choose okay so if you have any queries please ask me so any queries from your side injection molding is much quicker much faster it is used for mass production 
mass production means within our if you want to uh, produce thousand number of products okay it is possible only in injection molding during the same time if you go to 3d printing only one component you can print okay so 3d printing is a time taking process right so any other queries so thank you very much you can continue your hands on on 3d printing right i hope this workshop has uh, helped you a lot right so the basic intention of this workshop is to open our doors for maker space right without having hands on on uh, 3d printer right so it's difficult to hand over those missions to you so that's why i hope you everyone uh, you know how to operate a 3d printer and you should be in a position to operate by yourself right so here i am going to conclude my session if there are no queries from your side thank you very much see you then yeah ఏమన్నారండి చేయండి సారీకి చూపించండి రెగ్యులర్గా వస్తే తీసుకోండి ఇద్దాం సర్టిఫికేట్స్ రిజిస్ట్రేషన్ లేకపోయినా పర్లేదు Yes sir, just know it is over. Right. But I feel none of them are interested. Everyone just doing something in their laptops. 